All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome. I am back with yet another video. So, I mentioned in the last videos, I think, uh, that we have a bunch of other characters we can add. Or, most of you are not making a game with the actual mannequin, which makes sense. You probably want to have your own character, or something like that. So, it should work straight, fairly straight down the box. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to add another character if that's what you want to do. You probably have your own character as well. Uh, so, I mean, with the game animation sample, you have, if you go into blueprints, you have a bunch of retargeted characters. In this one, I have the Method Human one and the, uh, many, uh, the other mannequins. You will notice, like, if I add this Kellan character, it should work pretty much straight out of the box. Like I press one, see I get the sword, I have the sword animation overlay, I can play the sword animations. So it does work straight, pretty much straight out of the box. If I hit the character he backs, I forgot to add the blood effects I realized, so I will probably do that between videos. Uh, but you will notice that the socket might not be exact, and it's gonna be even more obvious if I do it with like the Manny character. So here we have the Manny, and you see if I now play, you see the sword is slightly... <laughs> My mic was far away, sorry. I forgot I'm, I have a, another mic. Hopefully you can hear me a little bit better now. Uh, but you can see the sword is not in the correct position. It's floating by the hand. And that is because the sockets that we are now using are on the base skeleton. See, the sockets that we are using are attached to this base skeleton. But in the other characters that you are likely using, if we open the Kellum one, for instance, you see the body mesh and the base mesh here. So this is the base mesh that has the sockets, but the body mesh is the one we're actually seeing. Whereas this base mesh here is just invincible, visible. Can be invincible too if you want to, but mostly it's invisible. Um, so there's two ways we can do this. One is to offset the sockets on this one. So we have the, if we open it up, we can see the sword is actually attached here. So that's one thing we could do. Uh, so you could just play and see like, okay, wait, it needs to go a little bit up and a little bit to the right. So you could do that here by just grabbing the sockets by the way I probably don't recommend this but you could technically just okay I knew it was up there and it need to go a little bit like that so if I now play oh I see it's in a better placement now at least so you could just account for it that's a fairly straightforward and easy way. I don't necessarily recommend it because it's not very scalable, but... Uh, but you could do that. The other way that is probably better is to stop use... Oh, whoops. Is to stop using the sockets on this mesh and actually place the sockets on the mesh that you're actually gonna use instead. So there's a million videos of how to actually add your own character to game animation sample, but basically you need you need to add your own character to the game animation sample. I'm probably gonna show it with like a graystone or something, but... Uh, if you have the metahuman characters, you can just... Most of you, I assume, is using metahuman. Also, a lot of people are using metahumans. So then you can just use this uh, 
retargeted the finished retargeted character as your character um the thing is uh the mannequin the ufn based mannequin you see it works all right with this kellen because this kellen thing kellen guy is uh is a normal uh is a male normal meta human whereas the ufn mannequin this mannequin is scaled approximately to the size of a uh, normal male or tall female whereas the tall meta human is scaled like the manny like this one so it's a bit too big so you see since the scale is off on this character the sockets don't match so that's why you actually need to need to set them up on the actual character in this case so let me pause and i'm gonna bring in another character in here and let's see if that works all right so i am back and we have added i added grace some character here from the paragon set so let's try to set that up um i think i can't remember but i think the the clean i think the normal gasp just if you download and just open the normal gasp i think it actually has i think it has the twin blast from paragon so it should be just working out of the box there as well but might as well set it up maybe you have a custom character that is not part of this setup or whatever so this is how you would add your own character so i'm gonna go into gasp hopefully i can get this to work i'm gonna right click here and retarget animations i'm gonna search for greystone uh, i like this model more but you would choose your own model here i'm not actually gonna export animations here I, i'm just after the retarget assets so i'm just gonna export retarget assets paragon graystone and i'm just gonna export it there then i'm gonna close this so you see here so that now we have these retarget assets here that we actually want to use so i'm gonna call this rtg Greystone, you name it to your character or whatever, RGG player or something, should work as well. I'm gonna copy the name, I'm gonna go into Gasp, Blueprint Retargeted Characters, and we're gonna open this generic retarget blueprint that is used by all of these characters, and we're gonna add our retarget asset here. So we're just gonna IK retargeter map I'm gonna select the graystone and just call it RTG graystone we need this name because we need to add a tag as well to our character these are the characters I have I'm gonna duplicate this many one Sandbox Crystal. Open it up, and you see. So, this one has the base mesh here, and it has another mesh here. So, here is where I would want to add my Graystone character. So, uh, I'm gonna do the tough one. Why did it not change? There we go. Maybe now. There we go. So now this character is using the Manny blueprint. That's not what we want to do. Because you see, this tag here is what the retargeter is using to find what retarget map it should use. So we want the RTG Greystone. So we're going to cut that in here and you can see the pose is a little bit better now so if we now rt uh, let's use the graystone character as our default character let's see if it works 
There we go. We have successfully added our own character. Uh, we have a slight issue with this one though. This one comes with a bunch of uh, swords. We don't really want that. And you can see the socket is v uh, very off on this one because the Greystone guy is a pretty big one. So let's fix that. Mm. Let's see. Torso arm six. This is a little bit cheating. Like what you should probably do is I don't like a character that has the weapons and stuff attached from the get-go. Uh, that is as part of the skeleton. Uh, unless you're making a very specific games with like really specific weapon animations that actually animate the bones of the skeletons and stuff, I wouldn't do that. Uh, so... I'm just gonna cheat. We're just gonna... I'm gonna go into here. Into the components. Misc. Materials. I'm gonna add a new material, M underscore transparent. I'm gonna set this to be a masked material, and I'm gonna press one, one on the keyboard and just mouse anywhere to get us a zero parameter. Plug that in, so now we have a transparent material. I'm gonna go into Greystone here. Sword and shield gone. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit shitty. The sword is technically still there, it's just invisible. Uh, so, either you would ideally, you would probably export the character into Blender and then remove the skeleton. I don't have the energy to do that now. So, now let's fix up the socket because it's very off. As we can see. Um, so we need to go into Greystone, Skeleton. Get the hand right. Add sockets. Equip sword. So now we need to add preview sm sword. Maybe I should actually use the swords from Greystone. Just see. There we go. And there we go. And there we go. So now we have a socket on this mesh. And now if we go into the components and you see when we equip the weapon, we attach it to our owning character and the mesh. We can't do that now, so we need a reference to the new mesh, which is gonna be this mesh. Not so. This is the default mesh, right, of any character. So this is the one we're currently trying to attach to, but that's the wrong mesh. This is the one we want to attach to. So bi layer. Call it player character to make it a little bit more obvious. I'm gonna call it get or do mesh. It's a new function. We're gonna add an output. 
it's going to be a skeletal mesh component. The mesh. We're going to go into our base character, not the blueprint, sorry. This is the wrong one. The base character here. I don't think I have the interface BI player character. And we're gonna get body mesh. It's the interface function we just made. And we can't actually do that. We have to open the specific this one. Exactly. Get body mesh. So this is this interface is now inherited from the base characters. So now we can get the body mesh here. So this is now gonna return the correct mesh. So now in here we can get instead of getting the mesh here, we just call get body mesh. And you see, the sword is now correctly attached. Perfect. So that's how you would add your own character to it. I'm not sure if I misunderstood people and that's not what they meant, but please let me know in the comments if there's something else you need. I have... yeah, that's how you would add any other character, basically. Uh, just like I did with this one. So, unless it's like extremely off on the bones and stuff, I think it should work fairly straight out of the box. So yeah, let me know in the comments if there's any more you want from this, otherwise we're gonna continue with the combat. In the next videos, probably add some dodge rolling and some stuff, and then NPC logic and so on. So yeah, see you in the next one. Bye!